Hello, true crimers. Oh, my hair's a hot mess. Hmm. Anyway, this is another true crime in a short amount of time, and it's also another coldest cases by Canadian province. Today, we are going to Newfoundland, so viewer discretion is advised. <laughs> This particular case is going to take us to St. John's, which is in Newfoundland, and it involves an Aboriginal um, or an Inuit uh, woman who was in her 20s, and her name was Henrietta Malek. Henrietta was a mother to two young children. She was also attending school. Henrietta had a desire to eventually become a nurse, and that's what she was going to school for. Now, her two sons, they were named Chesley and Byron, um, and her youngest son was actually uh, taken away from her um, as an infant because of her battles with alcohol. And he was in a, like a foster home uh, in, I guess, a nearby area called, the, called Makinson's. But in December of 1982, she was working her way to eventually uh, get her, her son, her youngest son back. She was allowed to go and visit her youngest son uh, there in the Makinsons, and that's exactly what she was intending to do on December 10th, 1982. She would leave her home uh, sometime before 9 a.m. Um, so that she could make the journey to Makinsons. However, uh, it does not appear that that was her first uh, plan. Uh, because later on in the evening on December 10th, she was still in the St. John's area um, and she was actually seen at a bar. The bar was called the Key Club and it was located on the west end of Water Street. Henrietta was observed um, having a drink um, and just sort of socializing a little bit. But then a bartender would later come forward to say that they observed Henrietta near uh, two men whose identities that has never been revealed. Uh, the bartender did not know who these two men were. Henrietta did not appear to want to be speaking to these two men. Um, it appeared that they were bothering her. Um, and at times it seemed like they were kind of trying to pull her away uh, and almost trying to take her out of the bar itself. No one can say for certain if these two men were actually successful in taking Henrietta physically out of the bar. Um, no one actually observed that specific part, just that they had been trying to do it. But Henrietta, after that particular evening, uh, she was never seen again. The following morning, uh, one of the workers at the bar found a purse lying on the ground, and it was confirmed later to be Henrietta's purse. In the purse was $8.15. Uh, she had her address book in there. She had uh, her checkbook, um, and she even had the keys to the boarding house that she was living in at the time. Um, so it did not appear that this was a part of any kind of robbery. The strange thing is, though, is that Henrietta wouldn't be reported missing until about two weeks after she actually disappeared and she was reported missing by her landlord. And I think a big reason for this is because uh, Henrietta didn't, like, live directly with any, like, family or friends. So, and it was sort of common for her to kind of, like, not be seen for a little while, um, but certainly not this long. So when police uh, were first, were, you know, told about Henrietta being missing, um, I don't know how extensive of a search they, they did. Um, however, they did have a witness come forward to say that on the night of December 10th, 1982, um, a witness said that a young woman, probably in her early to mid-20s, knocked on her door uh, and she was asking for a specific person. And the person was uh, Henrietta's boyfriend at the time, and he lived on the street where the young woman knocked on this witness's door. The witness said she did not know, uh, and so she, this person saw Henrietta, or supposedly Henrietta, walking down uh, Blackhead Street, which is the road, and I guess she was going in the direction of Cape Spear. But from that point, uh, no one reported seeing her. 
So this would bring police to then question Henrietta's boyfriend. Uh, I guess they, they they questioned him a lot. They questioned Henrietta's friends, uh, the people who lived at the boarding house. They questioned anyone that they could get a hold of that was at the key club bar that night. But apparently nothing really developed from any of this questioning. No leads came, nothing. It would be in 1995 that when one of the main investigators really looking into this case pretty much just came to the conclusion that Henrietta had to have met with foul play by someone. And they felt confident, not positive, but confident that she had been murdered that night. I guess they searched um, a house on uh, Blackhead Road where she was last seen walking away from looking for her boyfriend. Uh, I guess they even dug up like the ground and excavated the place, but they didn't find anything. And essentially that's it. Uh, police never developed any substantial leads, no um, significant information. There has been, there was no other reported witness sightings, you know, during the time. The only evidence they had was the bartenders and other people at the bar saying they saw her with two unidentified men and there's not even composite drawings of them. Um, you know, it was a dark bar, it was at night and no one really got to go look at them. Uh, and no one recognized who they were, so they may have been outsiders, possibly. And then other than that, they had her purse. Uh, now her purse was, I guess, uh, tested for DNA all the way in 2013. However, uh, there has been no updates, no announcements, nothing about if they even found anything on the purse, um, like DN like foreign DNA, maybe from a male contributor by chance. Um, no nothing has come out. And then, uh, three years after that, in 2016, a man would come forward whose name has not been released, probably for obvious reasons, um, who, when he actually saw a photo of Henrietta when he saw a photo of her many, 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 many years after the fact, uh, he went to police to say, I'm pretty sure I picked up that young woman um, at some point back in December of 1982 or so. Uh, she was hitchhiking. He even described the clothing she was wearing, um, which was confirmed to be the clothing she was wearing that day. And then this witness said that he remembers that this woman uh, had said she was trying to get to Makinson's to visit her son. He says he dropped this woman off, I guess, on the Trans-Canada Highway, which was at the intersection of Roach's Line. Police said they interviewed this man, this witness, uh, for a very, very long time, um, and they kind of grilled him a little bit. They felt confident that he was telling the truth, um, but they didn't have any, like, evidence or confidence uh, that this man had done anything uh, nefarious to Henrietta. Um, there has, I guess, always been issues between, like, her family um, and the police because the police did not seem to really put a ton of effort into this. Um, and a lot of it, you know, stemmed from the fact that, you know, she is an Aboriginal woman, um, and we all know that these types of cases uh, sadly don't get looked at or taken as seriously as others. Um, and apparently this has even continued 30 odd years down the line because now her, one of Henrietta's sons, Chesley, uh, you know, he found out through a Facebook group um, that the police were going to be testing the DNA on the purse, um, but the police never reached out to him and they never reached out to any members of her family uh, to let them know they were doing that. And then he had to call them uh, to find out the status of it. And apparently they told him this. I don't know what you're talking about, but even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. That's what the police said to Henrietta's son. Kind of once that information became a little more public, uh, police were, I guess, a little more open, uh, but there was, uh, I guess, a large search conducted of a wooded area near the area where she was last seen. Um, and they kind of did like a, I guess, like a wide range search there um, with a whole bunch of volunteers and they didn't find anything. No skeletal remains, no clothing items, nothing. And that is basically the end. Um, unfortunately, there is not a ton of information Police have not been totally forthcoming about what they have or what they don't have. 
about the tips and all that. Um, they've released a little bit here and there, but as of right now, her case is unsolved. She is presumed to be deceased and murdered, um, but is still technically missing. If you have any information about the disappearance and possible murder of Henrietta Malek, you can contact the RNC at 709-729-8000. You can also call Crime Stoppers at 1-800-222-TIPS. And again, any tiny bit of information could very well break this entire thing wide open and you could help possibly, maybe, give her family, especially her adult sons now, some type of answers, possibly even some closure. So if you have information, please do the right thing. You can reach out anonymously. But that is it for today's short true crime story. Uh, please remember to subscribe if you like to watch true crime content. I tell four true crime stories a week. Please follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all of its links below in my link tree, which is in the description of this video. And I have merch if you want to purchase any merch. We ship internationally. I have a Discord server if you want to join. Please be over the age of 18. And that is it. That is it for this case. So until the next case, true crime runies, I shall leave you with this. Bye. That's, bye. That's it. That's how, that's how you say goodbye to, to people. Are you expecting something like special, like some kind of weird outro? Because I don't have that for you. Rude.